This is the 21st Century Watchman's channel and I am Lynette and it's about time. It's about time is a one year chronological Bible study where we go through the Bible in time order and we're in the book of Amos right now and let's get started shall we? The words of Amos who was among the sheep herders of Tekoa which he saw in a divine revelation concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. There was an earthquake. Seismologists have traced it back and said it was during that ancient time. They see the, they, they're, they've seen the destruction and the ruins that, have, that substantiate what was said here. But you can see Tekoa right here. The city is like 10 miles right um, next to or close to Jerusalem. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a farm town where sheep herders were. And this is where our boy Amos came from. It is not the father of, um, of Isaiah. This is a, a, a prophet that was uh, born or was going around during the same time. It was a contemporary, if you will, of Isaiah's because he was going around during the same time. All right. And he said, the Lord thunders and roars from Zion in judgment and utters his voice from Jerusalem. Then the pastors of the shepherds mourn. So he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd. So he's coming from a layman's perspective. He wasn't a son of a prophet. He wasn't going to the school of the prophets. He was just a sheep herder. He, was, he lets you know he's just real plain with it. I'm just a regular guy here. And the Lord's given me a vision. This lets you know that the Lord can use regular people. The Lord will use regular people. That's his specialty. And this is what he's doing in the case of our boy here, Amos. He says, and the summit of Carmel dries up because of God's judgment. That's, and it reminds you of the victory that the Lord had on Mount Carmel with Elijah defeating the um, prophets of Baal and them all burning and things of that nature. And him, they being consumed and being, them being killed. They, um, it was a high peak and it was a, a big deal. And so kind of remind you, reminds you of the, the Lord's victory during that time. Thus says the Lord. So his, this is his judgment on the, cap, on, um, on the capital of Syria. For three transgressions of Damascus and for four. So when he says for three transgressions and, um, and for four, that usually means... Um, sin upon sin upon sin you know you've been doing a whole because it says here in the amplified version it puts in in parentheses multiplied delinquencies it really means sin upon sin upon sin it just you're just doing a whole lot you're doing way too much because of all of that this is the phraseology that was used here this is god doing his uh using his uh his slang if you will the the slang of the day making sure they broke he broke it down into a language they could understand and this is the way Amos, our boy, talked probably, and this is his language, and he's not as eloquent as Isaiah. His Isaiah gave you a very, um, and or gives you a very uh, elevated Hebrew, and he uses all kinds of symbolism, and he uses all kinds of different uh, language devices, uh, poems, and other other things, and you you'll be able to see as we proceed in Isaiah, but Amos is real straightforward. It's just, it is what it is. He's a, a guy of, of the sheep. He's just a, just a regular guy. He's just a regular Joe. In this case, a regular Amos. Let's keep going. All right. For three transgressions of Damascus and four, and, and for four, I shall not reverse its punishment or revoke my word concerning it. Because of all the sins upon sin, I'm not going to reverse anything. This is It's going to stand. Because they have threshed Gilead with sharp iron sledges. Because they've, they've done too much to Gilead. Um, he's not going to reverse anything. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction upon the house of Haziel. And it shall devour and the palaces and strongholds of Ben-Hadad, Haziel's son. I'm, I'm going to get all of you all. It's not going to be just one. I'm coming for your house, Haziel. And Damascus, I'm coming for you. I will also break the bar of Damascus and cut off and destroy the inhabitant from the valley of Avon. Okay. 
and the ruler who holds the scepter from Beth Eden and the people of Aram will go into exile to Kerr. This, if you says the Lord, this happened actually, this, this prophecy was fulfilled. Second Kings 16, you will see that this prophecy was fulfilled. This, so when the word does not fall to the ground, you know this is a true vision and a true word to, from the Lord. This was a prophet. He wasn't, again, not a not the prophet's prophet wasn't going around wasn't a prophet to the king but he it, it came straight from this gentleman here during the time of uzziah and joash thus says the lord this is for this is for the philistines this time for three transgressions of, of gaza and for four so for sin upon sin upon sin I will not reverse its punishment or revoke my word concerning, concerning it. Y'all can't pray your way out of this. I'm going I'm to do what I'm going to do. Because they took captive the entire Jewish population of defenseless Judean border villages of which none was spared. They And deported them to Edom for the slave trade. Y'all did way too much. Usually when you have, we do war, you have POWs, the prisoners of war, the ones that you you just go on and the ones that you were fighting against and they and, and they didn't die and, and they uh, capitulated and said, okay, they surrendered and, you know, I'll go in. They, they're taken for slaves, but they don't go back and get the whole town, the whole population, the entire cities. That's not how this is done. Philistines did too much. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction on the wall of Gaza and it shall consume her citadels. That means her high towers, her strong towers. It was the the big defenses in the in that town. We're we're coming for you, or I'm coming for you. Thus says the Lord, and I will cut off and destroy the inhabitants of Ashdod, and the ruler who holds a scepter from Ashkelon, and I will unleash my power and turn my hand against Ekron, and the rest of the Philistines in Gath and the towns dependent on these four Philistine cities shall die. The rest of the people there are going to die too because you took all of my people captive and enslaved them. You're for nothing. Your people are going to die. You took you enslaved mine, but I'm going to kill yours, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord. This is talking about uh, um, talking about Tyre from a city. This is a city in Lebanon, right? For three transgressions of Tyre and for four sin upon sin upon sin. I will not reverse its punishment or revoke my word concerning it i ain't taking it back ain't no take backs because they as middlemen deported an entire jewish population to edom so lebanon was on in on the same thing as as, as felicia here we are lebanon was in on it and it sent them to edom now you know edom was out was it was the brother of jacob so israel and esau and here we are his twin we sent them to we sent them to the twin to be um, enslaved, and you are all all involved, and did not seriously remember their covenant of brotherhood. You're supposed to do better, Tyra. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction on the wall of Tyra, and it shall consume her citadels, all this, everything that the whole wall. That this is strong. This is their defense wall. It protects their city going to consume, the fire's going to consume the wall. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not reverse his punishment or revoke my word concerning it, because he pursued his brother Jacob with the sword, corrupting and stifling his compassions and casting off all mercy. He was not supposed to do this. There, was, there were things that were supposed to be off limits. They were supposed to leave each other alone. They were supposed to let each other live and let live. They were not, maybe they weren't going to commingle, but we're supposed to be leaving, living and let, letting live because we know that we are li literally cousins and brothers and, and all, and you know, nieces, nephews. We're, we're blood tied. We're not like the Philistines. We're not part of that situation. But here there's blood involved. You was doing way too much, Edom. His destructive um, anger raged continually and he maintained and nurtured his wrath forever. He's still mad. He's still mad because he didn't get his birthright. And so you're and you're still holding that, you know, within this all, you know, this bloodline all these years. You have not gotten over it. So I will send a fire of war, conquest and destruction upon Teman and it shall consume the citadels of 
Boswell. Did too much, Edom. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon and for four. Ammon would, would leave the Ammonites alone too. Supposed to leave them alone. I will not reverse his punishment or revoke my word concerning it. He's saying it. I'm not taking it back because the Ammonites have ripped open the, the um, pregnant women of Gilead that they might enlarge their border. So I will kindle a fire of war, conquest, and destruction on the wall of Rabbah, of, of Rabbah in Ammon, and it shall devour its strongholds amid war cries and shouts of alarm on the day of battle. Even though people are going to be hollering, well, I'm, the fire is coming, and a tempest on the day of the whirlwind when the enemy captures the city. I'm going to have somebody come and capture the city, I, and I'm, I'm, it's going to be a, a like a whirlwind. So the fire is coming which of war, conquest, and destruction, and it shall devour its strongholds. It sounds even worse than what's going to be happening in um, in Philistia, but in you know between Ammon and what's happening in uh, well with them because this here it says because the Ammonites have ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead that they might enlarge their border. That's not okay. Just so they can enlarge their borders, so they could they could have more land. They did this. That's not okay. So the Lord's going to get them really good for this. We don't want the Lord's wrath. This is not okay. I mean, this is not what we should be aspiring to. And we see what the results of this ha what this brings to us. We don't want this. Their king shall go into exile. He and his princes together, says the Lord. Taking the kings too. Now we're in chapter two. This is not good. This is all from this man's vision the Lord gave him. Thus says the Lord, he's still having this vision. This shepherd is still up. This is a shepherd with a vision. For three transgressions of Moab and for four. So now we're at the Moabites. I will not reverse his punishment or revoke my word concerning it. He gave this vision up against the nations to a shepherd. He will give you something as well. We don't have to be of any note or, or of any special lineage. God will use the person that is open to be used. He says, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom, Esau's descendant, into lime and used it to plaster a Moabite house. He's done too much. So he wasn't supposed to mess with Edom. Moabites weren't. He did too much. I mean, he did. He did too much. Even though he was not, uh, um, how do I say it? He was not um, the chosen one. Edom was still Abraham's descendant. And the Moabites had done too much. Moab had done too much. You, This is not what you do with, these. Were, they still were God, they were still God's people. Whether he embraced them like he did his, his uh, Judah and uh, in Israel, they were still of that blood lineage and you need to leave those people alone. There are some people that just, you just can't touch. The Untouchables, remember that move, that show? These were the Untouchables. And these other nations had done too much. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction upon Moab, and it shall devour the strong, strongholds of Kerioth. And Moab shall die amid tumult and uproar. You're going to die in war and, 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 and outrage and a, a mob. You're going to, and all kinds of, you know, just a lot of chaos. You're going to die in this situation with war cries and shouts of alarm and the sound of the trumpet. I will cut off and destroy the ruler from its midst and to slay all the princes with him, says the Lord. There won't be anybody left to rule. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, now we're on to his people. We've moved from all the nations. Now we've moved to his people because there's has to be some um, payback for what they've done and their transgressions. For three transgressions of Judah and for four, sin upon sin upon sin, I will not reverse its punishment or revoke my word concerning it because they have rejected the law of the Lord, which is the sum of God's instruction to his people. There's there's going to be something to pay if we're not following God. Do we want to pay that up? So let's repent. If, if not, and have not kept his commandments, but their lies and their idols after which their fathers walked. 
That's what they've kept, but their lives and their idols caused them to go astray. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction by the Babylonians. Remember the Babylonians came and took them over upon Judah, and it will devour the strongholds of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, so we went from Judah to Israel now, I will not reverse it, its punishment, or revoke my word concerning it, because they sell the righteous and innocent for silver. Man, they do. Remember, they were selling the things inside the house of, of, uh, of the Lord and the, and the needy for the price of a pair of sandals. They're selling their, their things, their people, a lot of stuff. They shouldn't be doing that. These who pant after or long to see the dust of the earth on the head of the helpless as a sign of their grief and distress also turn aside the way of the humble. And a man and his father will go to the same girl so that my holy name is profane. A man and his father will mess with the same girl. That's foul. So that my holy name is profane. This is These are his, what his people are doing. So we cannot be bothered with that. They're so caught up in idolatry and doing the wrong thing and not keeping his commandments. And, and is that not happening now? Is that not happening now? They stretch out beside every pagan altar on clothes taken in pledge to secure a loan disregarding God's command because God told us to, to, be a, to be a lender and not a borrower. And in the house of their God, they frivolously, frivolously drink the wine taken from those who have been fined. They already in trouble when you, you're taking wine from, wine from them. Yet it was not the false gods who destroyed the Amorite before them. It, it, it said, yet it was I, not the false gods. I did that in front of them. And you still dogging me out. Though his height was like the height of the cedars, the, the false god, and he was strong as the oaks, I even destroyed his fruits above and his root below. I got rid of the false gods. I don't care how tall you guys built him. I got rid of the false gods. Also, it was I who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Let me just take y'all back. Because y'all forgot. Y'all forgot who I was. And I led you 40 years to the wilderness that you might possess the land of the Amorite. I did this for you. And this is how you going to play me. Then I raised up some of your sons to be prophets who gave you my revelation and some of your young men to be Nazarites, dedicated ones. They, they became priests. Is this not true? Oh, you children of Israel, says the Lord. But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink despite their vows and commanded the prophets saying, you shall not prophesy. How are you going to tell the prophets, the prophets not to prophesy? Behold, I am weighted down beneath you as, as a cart that is weighted down when it's full of sheaves. I'm done. Flight will be lost to the swift, so they will be unable to escape. And the strong shall not, shall not strengthen nor maintain his power, nor shall the mighty man save his own life. He who handles the bow will not stand his ground. The one who is swift of foot will not escape, nor will he ride the horse, save his life. Nor will he who rides a horse save his life nope, from the, you know, the invading army. Even the bravest among the warriors shall flee naked on that day, says the Lord. And that was chapter two. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt. I have known, chosen, cared for, and loved only you of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I shall punish you for all your wickedness. We don't want to be in this number. Do two men walk together unless they have made an appointment? Does a lion roar in the forest when, they, when he has no prey? Does a young lion growl from his den if he has not captured something? Does a bird fall into a trap on the ground when there is no bait in it? Does a trap spring up from the ground when it has caught nothing at all? Of course not. So it, so it is that Israel has earned her impending judgment. If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people tremble? If a disaster or misfortune occurs in a city, has not the Lord caused it? I'm letting you know how it's going to happen. I'm trying to let you rem remind you of how this works. Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret plan to his servants, the prophets. I've, I'm, I've, letting, I've been letting people know. I've been trying to give you revelation. I've been warning you through these people all this time that you've rejected. This is what the Lord is saying here. How many people have warned us? I know we're used to prophecies now that speak to our desires. 
but God also gives warnings. We should stop doing this. We should stop doing that. We should straighten up and act right. Those are those are warnings. Prophets are not just for our service. They're not um, genies. They are they are to warn us and to give us God's word concerning a matter and the world um, that surrounds us and that we live in. The lion is roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Proclaim on the fortress in Ashdod and on the citadels in the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria and see the great confusion within her and the oppressions and abuse of authority in her midst. Abuses of authority. People are doing that all the time, right? And people are oppressed. We see the poor all the time and, and the people that are downtrodden, the, the, um, the lesser of these or the least of these in this world. The people that people look down on the most, they're oppressed. Their lives matter, whichever group you put in that in that um thing, in that little um, phrase. Whatever lives matter, for they do not know how to do right, says the Lord. These who store up violence and devastation in their strongholds. It's a lot going on here in America, therefore, and in other parts of the country that I mean of, of the world where we know that people are being oppressed and they're being beaten and they're being um uh. uh cast down for no reason at all. Therefore, just because somebody's corrupt. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary, adversary, even one surrounded the, surrounding the land shall put you, down your strength from you and your, and your fortresses will be looted. This has happened. Thus says the Lord, just as a shepherd snatches from the mouth of the lion a couple of legs or a piece of the uh, sheep's ear to prove to the owner that he has not sold the animal, so will the remaining children of Israel living in Samaria be snatched away with the corner of a bed and part of the damask or the damask um, covering of a couch. Hearing and testify or hear and testify against the house of Jacob. Say it's the Lord, the Lord God of hosts. This is what we need to know. Um, this is us. I mean, in, in our time is so apropos. It's not just something that's for the other group or for them at that time. It, it's it's ringing true today. There are so many nations that have that are that are, are that are ungodly, and then there there's the ones that's proclaiming the name of the Lord and say we're we're um, in God we trust, and He's going to cast judgment. We've got to listen. On that day when I punish Israel's transgressions, I shall also punish the altars of Bethel with their golden calves. What's what's our what's your other god? What what, do you, what are we idol worshiping? And you know, TV, radio, music. You know, I don't know, food, uh, money, trying to secure the bag. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I shall tear down the winter house with the summer house. And the houses of ivory shall also perish. And the great houses shall come to an end, says the Lord. All the riches are going to come down. Hear this word. This is, we're on chapter four. You well-fed, pampered cows or women of Bashan who are on the mountains of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to their husbands, bring the wine now and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn an oath by his holiness that behold, the days are coming upon you when they shall take away, take, shall take you away with meat hooks and the last of you with fish hooks. It's getting ready to go down. And it, this sounds, it's, it's a lot of imagery here to let you know the gravity of what's happening, going to be happening. We can't keep living this way. And you shall go out through the breaches made in the city wall Every woman straight before her, unable to turn aside. So that's, that's how it's going to be regimented. It just reminds me of, of uh, internment camps where you cannot move. And because you're being enslaved, is our time coming? Or, or is someone going to come over and do some sort of nuclear war and start that? And with their um, all their little hovering things, uh, devices trying to find out intel on our country, is it going to eventually happen to us? Are we going to be given over because of all the... Um, the sin in this nation and other nations too like they're trying to do with the people that are um ukraine i'm just saying it could happen we we can't discount it and you shall be cast to harm and says the lord come to bethel where the golden calf and transgression and transgress in gilgal where idols are worshiped multiply transgression bring your sacrifices every morning your tithes every three days 
offer by burning a, a sacrifice of thanksgiving of that which is leavened. We need to give, do the right thing. And boastfully proclaim free will offerings, announce them. For this you, you so love to do, O children of Israel, says the Lord. They're, they're doing these things, but they're not doing what he wants. I also gave you cleanness of teeth because of the famine in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me in repentance, says the Lord. I've given you everything. I've tried to take some stuff from you and you still, and, and you know, and I've tried to do the great thing for you and you still are transgressing against me and you have not repented. Furthermore, I will withheld the rain from you. So I've done these things to try to get your attention and you have not, you're not um, doing anything because he cleaned his teeth by not giving him anything food to eat. I've withheld stuff from you, hoping to get your attention by doing these little things. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you when there were, there were still three months until the harvest. Then I would send rain on one city and on another city, I would not send rain. One piece of ground was rained on while the part not rained on would dry up. So the people, two or three cities would stagger into one city to drink water, but would not be satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me in repentance, says the Lord. You've not returned. What else has he got to do? I wounded, you know, you with a blight from the hot blast, um, blasting east wind. Can we say inclement weather and with mildew and the caterpillar devour, devoured your many gardens and vineyards, your fig trees and your olive trees. Yet you have not returned to me in repentance, says the Lord. I sent a plague among you like those of Egypt. We've, we've, we've sent some. I won't say the Lord sent them, but we've seen some plagues. We have. I killed your young men with the sword and I captured your horses. There have been wars. I made the stench of your camp rise up in your nostrils, up into your nostrils. Yet you have not returned to me in repentance, says the Lord. He's done all these things. I overthrew and destroyed some among you as I, your God, overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were rescued like a, a log pulled out of the flame. Yet you have not returned to me in repentance, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what I sh will, shall do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God in judgment, O Israel, O America, O Christians. For well, behold, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man that what are his thoughts, he who makes the dawn into darkness and treads on the heights of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Put some respect on this name. Are we ready for this level of judgment? Or do we want to repent and be saved? I invite you to say this prayer with me today. If you're on that side, I want to repent. I want to make sure that I'm right. And although I try to live right, I still need to repent all the time. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Say this along with me, please. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have said this prayer with me, please put your name in the chat and we'll be praying for you and we'll be rejoicing with you because salvation is yours. And you have, you are, if you, it's your first time, you're welcome into the, um, the family of, of God. And if it's not your first time and you're just, you know, getting life straight again and you're getting on, back on the course, we're celebrating with you. It, and God bless you. And if you've done this and you said the prayer with me and you don't have a church home, put your name in the chat and we will get back to you and we'll make sure that, because and let us know what city and state you live in as well. And we'll um, help you find a church home in your area as we have members all over this country. Please let us know, put your city and state. And we'll be rejoicing with you to make sure that you get to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, loving family of God that will help nurture you and cultivate your gifts so that you can do thus, says the Lord. God bless you. Have a great rest of your evening. Know that this is real. And it's about time that you study again with us tomorrow. How about that? God bless you.